All right, welcome back, everybody. It's another beautiful day here in Texas, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we've been camping a lot lately out at the river and uh, with all our friends and our Volkswagens and our vintage gear. So we kind of figured now would be a good time to go through and show you guys what we pack, uh, the vintage stuff anyways, not the modern camping stuff, but we take a lot of old stuff. So I'm gonna run through that and show you guys what we take. I always remember camping when I was her age, uh, camping and, and dad always had the old green Coleman stove and the old lantern and stuff. And I always thought it was so cool to use like really old camping gear for camping. And now I have all that same stuff, but it's way older. So still works super great though. It's awesome for camping. We have a lot of fun with it. And it's nice for conversations with whoever's camping next to you. They come over and they're like, man, the car's old, the stuff's old, like that's so cool. So we're gonna go through it and uh, we'll, we'll set up our little campsite um, kind of in a park right now because we're not camping, but uh, it'll look just like a campsite, I promise. So we're gonna go do that and then uh, you can see how fast we set it up, uh, even for being really old equipment. And then uh, we'll, we'll go check out all our cool stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You like camping? Of course. Yeah? Awesome. Okay. All right, well that didn't take long at all. <laughs> Actually, real time, we probably had about 10, 15 minutes in setting up. So as long as we get to the campsite before it gets dark, everything goes pretty smooth. That's the beauty of bus camping. So we'll take a little tour of the campsite here. Tiki torches with uh, citronella is essential. And I know these aren't vintage, but they were around back then, right? So why not? Gotta have a cooler put your stuff in. I like the old coolers, uh, although I must confess I do have a Yeti that uh, we keep our beer and our drinks and our food in because we do like it to stay cold while we're camping and we usually go for a couple days. So, uh, But I do take the old cooler, a Coke cooler. I got a bunch of old Coleman coolers too that, uh, that we use for if it's like a day trip. They usually work pretty good with dry ice. Um, we got this really sweet vintage Coleman table. I picked this up at the uh, Arizona Buses by the Bridge this year from uh, Eric Arnold, actually. Uh, he's a pretty well-known photographer. I'll throw a link to one of his stuff down in the, uh, somewhere down here. Um, but the cool table with the original stools and everything, the original canvas. Um, I guess they're kind of rare, but not super rare. Pretty cool though. Um, you gotta have a, a grill because I don't like cooking on campground grills. Who knows what people put on those things. So I usually just take my own. And then we got the, the little camp oven that we use to make, what do we cook in there? Cinnamon rolls, uh, cookies, all sorts of sweets. We make all sorts of delicious things in our Coleman camp oven. Um, I don't even think that's really that old, but again, they had them back in the day, so it fits. Uh, one thing for sure we got to have is the Coleman stove, the good old 425 two burner. They're bulletproof, they're easy to clean, they last forever. They work great when they work great. 
And I know Pammy and Robert are gonna laugh because one time I was cooking bacon and it got a little out of control and I almost lit the bus on fire. Um, but that was before I had this cool stand, which is also a Coleman uh, vintage stove stand to hold it on, which I can move it out from underneath the original awning and not catch the bus on fire. Uh, this is what I usually make the coffee on in the morning for everybody at the campsite. I'm usually first up, second up, and everybody likes to cook when we camp, so it's kind of like duking it out for breakfast. But uh, coffee seems to be one thing I can get away with making. So, little Coleman coffee pot percolator. These are great. Again, easy to use, easy to clean. Totally worth getting, and they're like five bucks. Um, and then our lanterns, of course. Can't go camping without a Coleman lantern. Uh, these two that I have are interesting story. They're both 66, so they both match this bus in year. Um, you can tell that by looking at the bottom here. Can't really see it, but trust me, they're both 66. This one I got from uh, Mr. Jeffrey Bishop up in uh, Northern Arizona, Old Volks. Good guy, good club brother. Uh, he sold me that because it matched my bus. And uh, this one is actually the same lantern as that one. And this one I got from uh, Brother Don from Idaho, uh, Old Volks. Uh, Don Eastman, he sold me that at the same show I got this table at, uh, Buses by the Bridge. You can see the uh, lantern walk sticker they give you when you do the show there. It's pretty cool. So that's a treasured piece for sure. Uh, this is a heater actually and we'll go through how to light these and run these a little bit later. Um, but this one you basically just pour the fuel in the tank, pour the fuel on the top and light it and when it burns down, boy they go all night. Super nice. If you're not close enough to the campfire, you know they work really good. Definitely wouldn't put it inside the bus though. Um, as they do tend to put off some gases and you don't want that so we don't need that so keep them outside and uh, but when you're sitting around the, the campfire or lack of a campfire if you can't get one lit they work pretty good uh, and then we'll move into the bus here We've got our big wash tub it's, uh, sometimes you don't have access to running water or any water really when you're primitive camping so it's good to take some you know a big bucket of water or something with you to uh, wash your dishes wash your hands whatever take a bath you know whatever you need but i take drinking water in bottles which we keep in the original fridge here uh, i don't use that as a fridge i use it more of as like a pantry uh, keep certain things that i always want to have in the bus some water some snacks but this is good for washing up uh, this actually works, but I don't use it because I don't want to wear out the rubbers But the uh, I guess the idea was to have a bowl like this and you could pump the water out uh, But I've never had one that worked until now and I'm scared that one's gonna quit. So we don't use that one uh, And then you come inside the bus here and we've got the uh, kids cot Which I don't think I've ever seen a kid sleep in one. That's usually where the bedding ends up during the day, you just kind of throw everything up there and uh, get it out of the way. And then this is the uh, pantry basket. Keep our, see we were loaded down for camping this last weekend and we ended up not going because had some other things to do, but you know, s'mores, coffee, gotta have good coffee when they camp, gotta have it. Jiffy pop, cause you never know. Hot chocolate, cause this one. She likes that hot chocolate. Corn muffins, in case we decide to make chili, we can throw them in that little oven. You know, that works out nice. Uh, got that from another friend of mine who was throwing it out. He said he had no use for it, but fits perfect on this seat. And then once we get to the campsite, I'll usually take it out and put it on a, a big table so that everybody has access to snacks. And then uh, the beauty of a pop top, man, wake up and get that first good stretch in you know and you can see usually when we point it this way the river is like right there <laughs> the park right on the river it's cool 
but uh, it's also a good view of my firewood so I know my supply, how cold are we going to be. Um, I've kind of taken to just leaving that firewood up there all the time now. Never know when you're going to hit a campground I guess. Kind of nice to have it. Uh, I usually carry a fire pit with me too but I didn't want to pack it for this because it's just kind of big and bulky. It's a good view of my original awning. Came with this bus. Riviera awning and you saw me put it up it's actually this one's only been up about 15 times maybe since new and most of those were me and uh, it's kind of a pain to put up no joke but once you've done it a few times it's not that bad and if you have a little helper that can kind of hold the front it's not so bad when we come to the back we've got our everybody's got to have a bus pillow in their bus so another gift from another good friend that's cool. There's the, the rest of our awning, sleeping bag, and I just keep that in here. This is my spare tools and uh, spare parts kit. So that keeps my cables and spark plugs and things. And I don't like curtains, uh, so I added these blinds. Super nice. Just close them and dial in that light just right. Well, those were cheap. I got them at Home Depot, oddly enough, uh, and they, they fit perfect and they were super cheap. So if you have a camper, that's what I would do. But the cool little table pops up, you know, we sit here. But we usually don't spend too much time in the bus when we're camping. Uh, we usually spend time out here using all this cool stuff in the campground. Get another good shot of the the setup here and then everybody kind of camps different everybody brings different stuff like I said we bring new stuff but mostly I like to use the vintage camping equipment with the uh, vintage camper it just seems to fit for me and I love the Coleman green it's just classic to me that's what I camped with as a kid my grandparents always had it my parents always had it so now she gets to go camping and she gets to have those memories of camping with the green Coleman stuff, right? One day all this will be yours. So, all right, we're gonna go close in here and I'll uh, show you guys how to operate some of this vintage machinery so that you can look cool at your next camp out. And we'll go get in there and do that. Uh, it's never a real bus camping trip without your Nag Champa hippie sticks. Uh, that's for you, Matt Jackson. So VW Life on uh, the YouTube. Matt and Gary's channel. You gotta check them out. They got all kinds of good stuff. Uh, those guys go everywhere. And they make a lot of cool videos. So this will enhance the campsite and uh, this makes you have a better time. Let's put that right there. Okay, so we're going to go over how to light and uh, use some of this stuff, you know, and don't make fun of me because sometimes they don't work. But I just had this one working the other day, so I think we're going to be in good shape. Uh, I spent an hour at the last camp out to everyone's amusement trying to get all, I took four lanterns trying to get those things lit, and I could not get one of them to light. And I spent an hour trying to do it, and everybody was having the best time at my expense, cracking up. But I think I fixed it. Um, so we'll start with this one because this one's easy and I'm not actually going to light it um, because once you light them, they go forever. But basically what you do is you uh, unscrew this cap here and you fill that full of uh, Coleman white gas camping fuel. Uh, I only use the Coleman fuel. I don't like the other stuff. It's just Coleman is Coleman. Name brand stuff. I'm sure the other stuff's just fine, but it's just not for me. Uh, so you fill that up and you make sure that cap's on good and tight. And then the instructions are kind of iffy on this one. Some people say you're supposed to flip it over for a few seconds. Uh, some people say you're supposed to just dump the fuel right on the top and let it soak in. I kind of do both. So I'll fill it up till it's full and I'll, I'll give it a couple, a couple flip overs and then I'll take a little cup of the white gas and kind of spread it all around there. And what this does is inside this bottom part here is like a wick and that fuel soaks up into this 
mesh fiberglass thing they got going here. And when you light it, it turns into like a, well first it turns into a huge bonfire. Once it burns down, it's just this glowing red catalytic heater and the heat actually draws more fuel up. So once it's going, it's going and man, they cook, they do really, really well. Um, you can stand there and just have it at your feet and it's even on a pretty cold night it's pretty handy for fishing and stuff you don't want to have a big fire but you want to stay warm it's great um, they come with a little dog bowl that you put on there and snuff it out uh, this one doesn't have it a couple of my other ones do have it um, but they're super nice so i don't burn those i just usually you know use the stuff that looks the most used and it always seems to work so you light it and once the fire goes down you kind of snap this shut and you can pick it up uh, Pro tip, don't leave the bale up when you set it down because that thing gets hot. Fold it down, then you can pick it up whenever you want. Those things don't get hot anymore. So that's nice, it works really good. So the next thing I got here is this beautiful, beautiful lantern. Um, again, this one's a, it's a 1966 model. It looks like December of 66. This is a 220F. Uh, this is one of the most common Coleman lanterns. They probably made, I don't know, 100 million of these things. Who knows? They're everywhere. Um, they're pretty cheap to buy. They're pretty cheap to run. Even the parts are not very expensive. I think I just bought a generator for one, which is this little tube here. It was like $9 on uh, Amazon or whatever, eBay. So cheap to run. Uh, basically, again, pull the little cap off, fill that guy up with fuel tighten that down make sure that the o-ring is good on those and then on the other side you have the little plunger you got to crack that counterclockwise i usually give it about a half a turn and it's real hard to see but right in the middle there is a little tiny hole and that's an air hole and you got to plug that with your finger while you pump i've seen people you know pump these things all day long and the, I can't get pressure, I can't get pressure because all the air is coming out of that hole. So you got to put your finger on that hole. If this tank is 100% full, you might get 25, 30 pumps and you'll feel, see it's starting to get hard now, you feel that pressure and then you got to push it down and just give it a little snug to the right and then you've got your cleaning lever here, give that five or six little turns, that pushes a little rod up in here and there's like a little tiny, it's not even a needle, it's like a, a brass hair almost, it's very small and it pokes a hole in this little screen, it just gets the carbon off of it so that the gas can flow and then uh, if I remember correctly you're supposed to have that thing up, so we're going to try it with it up up position means that the little thing is down maybe it means it's up I don't know but we're gonna try that um, the mantles usually stay good for you for a long time if you're careful with them and you don't go banging this thing around these things are basically ash from the very first time you use them but I've had these on there for like two years and they're still good but they're cheap too I think you get a, a four pack for two dollars at Walmart or whatever so you just crack this knob, quarter turn, and you'll hear the gas come out. It's going to be hard to see this during the day. But there. Yeah, they're lit. You feel the heat coming off of them. That's basically it. I light them with the glass off because sometimes they get pretty sooty. And uh, well, anyways, you're not gonna see it anyways. It's daytime. Um, let's keep trying. There it goes. We got a little bit of low pressure. Um, anyways, you'll get them going and they'll start to glow and then they'll get kind of brighter and brighter and brighter and once they get bright and there's no more flame, 
then you can carefully put the glass in there. I always like to put the, uh, the logo out. I don't know, it's just another weird thing that I like to do is match up the logos. And you put your top on, you wanna be careful not to lose that. The ball nut is very important. And when you put this on, as you can imagine, this is gonna get pretty hot. So when you put that on, you don't wanna put it on tight. You wanna just put it on so there's a little room because this gets hot and expands and that thing is gonna get stuck on there. You won't get it off. Um, these, you can leave the bale up on these because they have a pretty nice chimney right here. All the heat kind of goes out. So the handle doesn't tend to get too hot. Um, I hang this one on the on my awning like this from a little carabiner. It's fine. Goes. It actually two of these hanging off that light up this whole area really, really well. You can walk around with these things. You know, as long as you're not banging on them, you know they're they're pretty pretty stable. They work pretty good. They get really bright. The later model ones, you can adjust the brightness. There's another little knob that you can turn to dim it or brighten it up. Um, these are pretty much just full blast all the time. Uh, but that's okay, because you can always turn one off if you need to. Uh, they make a cool sound too. It's pretty cool. I don't know. Vintage camping, right? Uh, so that's that. And then uh, we can move on to the stove. These are pretty intimidating uh, for some people. I'm going to try and do this backwards. Uh, people get intimidated by this because you have your big red gas tank, you know, sitting here. Same pump system. It's actually the same part number, too, when you order it. Uh, so you just pump this like crazy until you get good pressure, close it off, turn this a couple times to clear out the, the generator, which is what they call again that little tube, and then uh, this one you leave the little lever guy up, all the way up. This knob works, I don't know if I have enough pressure, there it goes, bingo. So what this is doing is, it's kind of hard to see the little flame in there, but it's there. A little pump here. Anyway, so this flame, which is in there, heats up this tube. And then once it gets to a good temperature, it can atomize the fuel correctly. And you can push that little lever down See, now it's too rich, so we're getting these big flames. So you can lean it out by closing that off, that hole. And you kind of work it. Once it's been running for a couple minutes, you close that down, you can get a nice blue flame, super even, super great. And then uh, it'll actually boil water pretty quick, uh, surprisingly. And to clean them, all you do, I'll show you on this one, you pop this little screw off, and then all these little discs come out. You just clean them, you know, with a wet rag or if you got to scrub them. And then you just stack them back up, put it back together as long as they're even. And they're kind of, uh, I don't know if you can see it. God, that's hot. <laughs> they're kind of waffly in there. So you got to set them upright so that the air can come out the gas. Uh, and then, oops, finger. You know, once they're clean, they, they burn really even and real nice. Um, and then on this side, is the knob for the other burner here you turn once you get this first one lit and going really good you can turn that knob and this burner will light and you can kind of have two flames but you got to have good pressure and lots of fuel because once it starts to fade the flames will go dim and you're not cooking anymore um, but that's you know it's super simple again just you know mine's kind of crusty because we just used it and I haven't cleaned it yet I'm gonna get a little lazy when we come back from camping but it works really good when it's not lighting your bus on fire. This is how we camp. Super simple, but very effective. Got the ladder for climbing up on the top here. This is, uh, this is a cool little trick that I learned from, uh, again, from watching VW Life on the YouTubes. Put a piece of plywood on the rack and you can really put anything you want up there. 
and uh, I mean, I can stand on this thing, and I'm a big guy. Kind of get a better view of your surroundings. Point you right at the sun. Look at that. It's cool. Um, you can put a chair up here. I think in one of my earlier videos that you saw, uh, John was on top of his bus in Lano. And he had a chair up there, recliner. And he reclined it and he said it was pretty sweet. So that's just nice. I have another little place to hang out. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed our campsite preview. If you see us out at the river camping or at a show camping, come on by, say hello. And we've always got something on the grill or something cold in the cooler. We love hanging out, so come say hi. Like the page, subscribe to our channel, tell a friend, you know, all the stuff that we always say. Put the links down here or wherever, who knows. But thanks for watching.